Hi guys, today we are going to be creating this 3D text flying around a 3D building in DaVinci Fusion. And yes, I did say a 3D building because it was all done in 3D. It's super easy to do, super fun, and you can swap out the, um, the text for logos or other objects very, very easily. So let's get into it. So the first thing you'll need is a Fusion composition. I've already got two here, I don't need one, but if you do, come up to your media pool just here, right click and hit create a new fusion composition, give it a name, change the settings to 15 seconds just here and then just hit create. Once you've got it on the timeline, just go over it and then right click and hit open in fusion. So here we are in DaVinci Fusion. First thing I'm going to do is bring in our building footage, connect it across. I'm going to rename it F2 by clicking on it, call it Office. Now, if we look in the window here, it's quite a hard building to track because we've got reflections, we've got opaque windows and things like that. So one trick I use is if we click on the Office footage and then shift space bar, what, what we're looking for is an unsharp mask. And what that does is it adds uh, contrast to the image, uh, which, make it, which is really good for the tracker. Next thing we're going to do is bring in our tracker. So click on the unsharp mask, shift space bar. And we're looking for our camera tracker, which is this one here. Now, one thing you can do with the camera tracker is most of the time it, it, it searches using the Luma, uh, how bright and dark an image is. But if we go up to the top here and click these, this button here, we can go down and actually look at the various color channels and see which one has the most contrast in it. The red's looking pretty good, so what we can do is come across to the right hand side and under track channel, change it to red like that. Now to add some trackers, we just need to come up to the right hand side and where it says preview auto track locations, just click that. Now there is a weird bug in DaVinci, sometimes the dots don't appear, so moving the image seems to bring them back to life. Now we actually need more tracking points than this, uh, so what we can do is go to detection threshold, lower this amount and same for the minimum feature set. Here we get something like that. Now I'm gonna hit auto track. It's gonna take a while to do this, so I'm gonna come straight back to you. So it's finished tracking, so we now need to come up to the solve menu, which is the third one in here. So what the solve menu does is essentially it looks at the tracking points and it asks the question, how well have I done at tracking this scene? Uh, it can take a while to do, so I'm gonna hit the solve button and I'll be straight back to you. So it's finished tracking, and if we come over to the right-hand side, it's finished the solve, and it's given us an average solve error of 1.5249. We need that number to be below one. So let's go down here. I'm gonna increase the track um, marker length to seven. Let's try eight. There we are. And if we come down here, it, it's, it tells us here that there's 3,327 markers that uh, don't meet that. So let's try deleting them and resolving. So now we go up to solve. Uh, again, I'll come straight back to you. So it's finished solving. And if we come across to the right hand side, we can see we now have an error of 0 0.1838, which is absolutely amazing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to de delete the unshot mask. Click on the camera tracker, come over to the export menu just here, and let's just go down and change it from aligned to unaligned. If I go here to save frame 140, I can zoom in, and I'm gonna tell the um, tracker that this is the center of our 3D universe, and I can do that by hit set from selection. And then I'm gonna change it from unaligned back to aligned, and I'm gonna come up here, and where it says export, I'm gonna click on that. I now no longer need our tracker. So what I'm gonna do is just unplug it and drop it down here. I'm gonna take the output from this camera tracker here and I'm gonna connect in to our media out like that. And we're now in the 3D world. If I click on this merge and hit the number one on the keyboard, our world pops up just here. How cool is that? Let's check it from the perspective view. So here's all of our buildings. We'll go to the top view. 
So the building we're interested in is this one right here. Right, so to mask this uh, building out, we're actually gonna use a 3D object. So I'm gonna come over to our toolbar just here and I'm gonna grab a Shape 3D and I'm gra gonna grab a Merge 3D as well. And rename this Shape 3D to uh, F2 Building Mat. And if I connect it across to this merge here, we can see that it's actually uh, coming as a plane. On the right hand side, you can see it says it's coming as a plane. We're gonna change that to cube. And I'm gonna come up here and uh, this uh, window here, I'm gonna bring up two viewers. And now if we look in our main viewer here, we can see all of our 3D points. This is our building, camera and floor and everything. So first thing we need to do is go to our point cloud just here. And we need to change the size, size of those point clouds because they're so big that it's going to obstruct us. So clicking on this size button here, use your control key if you need to. Just take those right down. Somewhere like that, that'll do. Now what we can do is we can click on our cube and we can put it in position. If you go across to the third one in on the right hand side, you'll see the transform section. You'll see that there. So just click that. Uh, let's rotate it on its Y so it's matching. About there. We'll just put it in position. And we can see our rotation's a little off, so let's do that again. There, that looks good to me. Let's just bring that across. This part of the tutorial is probably my least favorite because there's a lot of fumbling around with sizing and all that kind of stuff. So let's just uh, move our uh, this one up as well. Now what we need to do is come to here where it says top, right click, and we're gonna to go to the right view here. Now in the point cloud here, we can actually see the height of our building. So let's, uh, let's increase the size of our box so it fits. The way we do that is we come to the scale, untick X, Y, Z, and increase the Y like so. So it's just coming up to the top of that building. Right, let's go to the back to the top view. Now what we need to do is resize the cube and put it back in this position. We can see from the green dots where the building ends on both sides. You can see it ends here and we can see it ends here. So what you'll need to do is mess around with the X, Y, Z uh, scale and the translation X, Y, Z as well until you get it in position. So I've uh, messed around with the X, Y, and Z size and uh, rotation. And now we've got this, which looks like a pretty good track to me. Right, it's now time to add our text. And the way we do that is with a uh, 2D uh, text node, not a 3D. You can use 3D if you want to, but I like I like the, uh, the way the 2D look. So come up to your window on the right hand side and type in the text you want to use. Now, because we're using it, to, because it's being wrapped around the building, what you need to do is select it all, go to edit here, hit copy, and then hit paste. Let's go here and change the color to something orangey or bright or whatever it takes your fancy. We now need to bring in a merge and we're gonna connect our text into that merge like so. Uh, we now need to actually map this text onto an object so we need to come up to here to Shape 3D, drag that in like that, and connect your merge out into it like so. Now, if we connect that across to our merge like that, number one, it looks messy. So let's go halfway across the line, hold the Alt key and just create a little arm like that. And it looks so much cleaner. So we can now see that it's come in as a plane. We need to change that to a sphere. So let's come up here on the right hand side and change that to sphere like that. Now we can see on our right hand window here how big it is. It's absolutely massive. So let's move it into position. Come across to the right and check, take the radius way down. Hold your control key while you're doing it because like I say, it's very sensitive. And then we're just gonna nudge it to the left like that. Now if I rotate that round, so clicking on the building, on the uh, shape 3D, come to the transform, rotate it round in its Y, we've got a huge gap in the text there. So let's go to the text node and increase the size. Hold the control key while you do it because uh, like I say, it really is sensitive. So there we are, we fixed that. Right, now what we can do 
Now we've got everything set up, we can actually go to these two notes here, right click, copy, paste, clicking on this text, oh actually no, clicking on this merge, put that in the window like so, and both our texts are in the same position, so click on the text here, come across to transform, and then just move it down in the Y like so. You can then come across to shading, and where here it says appearance just here, change that to outline like that. Now when we put this in the window, we get to that. We're going to go to frame one. Still pretty close there, so let's uh, make sure we nudge it out of the way a little bit. I'm just going to move it in the uh, X. There we are, and in the Z as well. Now it's also low down on our building, so the way you fix that is come to the translation here, hold the control key while you're doing it, and just move it up like that. Now you can angle the text if you want to, uh, by in the Z or X. If you want it to come in like that, so we'll do it like that. Now because we rotated it uh, to look at the text, if we look here on the Y, it's set at minus 40. We need to just double click here and set that back to zero. We're now going to hit a keyframe on the Y. We're going to come across to frame 120. We're going to hit minus 360 in the window just here, and it'll automatically create a keyframe. We now need to make that continuous, so come up to the spline control tool here and hit shape 3D like that. Make sure to hit zoom to fit. Then what we need to do is come down here, use this one here, select all keyframes, and then come across to here where it says set loop, and voila, we now have our looping text. Right, final thing to do is we need to map our video onto the, uh, onto the white uh, mat there. So how do we do that? It's actually quite simple. What we need to do is come across to this camera 3D here, right click on it, hit copy, come here, right click and hit or control V paste. We're going to now connect that into our Merge 3D like so. Now if you look at the camera, it's got a locked key just here. We need to unlock it. And the way you do that is right click on it, come up to modes and come down and, and click this one here to unlock it. We need to project our video onto it. So I'm going to disconnect this, come up to here and connect that in. With the camera selected, come across to the right hand side Make sure on image that enable image plane is selected and then go across to projection and put enable camera projection and nothing has happened. And the reason for that is we need to go over to our camera tracker just here and make sure that lighting is enabled. And voila, we're nearly there. Only problem is, is our text has actually gone black. And the reason for that is quite simple. Click on your shape 3D. Now, where is it? I always forget where. Oh, see here on, under controls, under lighting, just turn off affected by lights like that, and it all comes back. And now when we play that back, how cool is that? Now, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Uh, this project will be available for download off my website, completely free of charge. All you need to do is hit subscribe, uh, go to the link in the description, go to the website, put in your email address and download this project and any other project actually on the site for completely free of charge. Please know I hate spam, so I will not be spamming you. If you have any uh, questions, queries, or comments, please leave them below. I do love reading them, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.